Alberta, majestic Rockies, and wild rose country. Located in Western Canada, Alberta is one of the three prairie provinces. It is bordered by British Columbia to the west, Saskatchewan to the east, the Northwest Territories to the north, and the U.S. state of Montana to the south. Along with Saskatchewan, Alberta is one of only two landlocked provinces in Canada. Alberta's surface area is approximately 662,000 square kilometers, with the eastern part of the province occupied by vast prairies, the western part covered by the majestic Rocky Mountains, and coniferous forests in alpine and foothill areas. There are a number of large rivers and over 600 lakes in Alberta. As of 2022, Alberta's population reached 4.6 million, making it the fourth most populous province in Canada, behind Ontario, Quebec, and British Columbia. Alberta's capital is Edmonton, while Calgary is its most populous city. More than half of Albertans live in the North-South Corridor from Edmonton to Red Deer and Calgary. Other major cities include Lethbridge, Millicent Hart, Grand Prairie, and Fort McMurray. Prior to becoming part of Canada, Alberta was inhabited by indigenous peoples, including Plains Indians and Woodland Cree. Fur traders of Hudson's Bay Company and Northwest Company traveled to this area in the late 18th century. The first fur trading post in Alberta was Pond's Fort, established by Peter Pond in 1778 on Lake Athabasca. Fort Chippewyan followed in 1788. Soon, there were also posts in present-day Edmonton and surrounding region. In 1870, the Northwest Territories was formed by the Dominion of Canada. The present-day Alberta was named for Queen Victoria's daughter, Princess Louise Caroline Alberta. The princess was the wife of the Marquess of Lorne, Governor General of Canada in 1882, when the District of Alberta was created as part of the Northwest Territories. Thanks to successive homesteading campaigns, especially the arrival of railroad in Western Canada in the 1880s, waves of immigrants settled in the prairies to grow wheat and start cattle ranching. At the turn of the 20th century, the demand for provincial autonomy from the Northwest Territories grew louder and louder. Eventually, in 1905, the Alberta Act was passed by the Parliament of Canada, which established Alberta as a province, taking effect on September 1, 1905. When you think of Alberta, what image comes to mind? Depending on whom you ask, Alberta may be referred to as miles and miles of archaeological sites dating back to the age of dinosaurs, endless prairies from horizon to horizon, open forests of trembling aspen, or dense stands of spruce and fir that drape the mountainsides. But to me, Alberta is, first and foremost, a giant parkland. The Rocky Mountain is a beloved and iconic Canadian landmark. Indigenous peoples arrived in the Rocky Mountains area at least 10,000 years ago. For them, the mountains were both sacred places and a source of game, fish, and other supplies. The awe-inspiring alpine scenery, numerous wildlife such as bighorn sheep, mountain goats, elk, moose, bear, and so forth, the glamorous glaciers, and the bubbling thermal waters, the list goes on. Canada's first national park was created in 1885 around the warm mineral springs at Banff. The name Banff comes from Banffshire, Scotland, the birthplace of two major financiers of the Canadian Pacific Railway. 
ages in Banff, where the idea of a Canada-wide system of protected areas took root. As of 2021, Parks Canada is the steward of 38 national parks and some 150 national historic sites, each representing a significant aspect of the landscape of the country's environment and history. These protected areas characterize our country and define who we are as Canadians. Covering 6,641 square kilometers, the Banff National Park is the best known and most visited national park in Canada. The Jasper National Park was named after Jasper Haas, who managed a former fur trading post in the area known as Jasper House in the early 1800s. Established in 1907, the Jasper National Park covers 11,228 square kilometers, which is 70% larger than the Banff National Park. Apart from an abundance of opportunities, the park offers in terms of an array of recreational, educational, and spiritual values. The Jasper National Park is perhaps the best stargazing place in Alberta. Banff, Jasper, Kootenay, and Yoho National Parks, together with the provincial parks of Humber, Mount Robson, and Mount Assiniboine, are recognized internationally as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Canadian Rocky Mountain Park World Heritage Site is one of the largest protected areas in the world. Driving along 93 North, the Icefields Parkway provides the experience of a lifetime. Named for the chain of ice fields that roofs the Rockies, this is one of the world's greatest mountain high roads. At Columbia Ice Field, two hours from Banff, you are literally soaked in the scenery of Wonderland. Ice has shaped these mountains for millions of years. Look at the towering peaks and the rugged glacier-carved cliffs. The spectacular ice field inspires respect for nature's grandeur. The role of glaciers is much more than providing scenic wonders. Glacial ice provides a steady supply of life-sustaining fresh water in the mountain parks, foothills, and communities downstream. The landscape and culture of the Rockies have been shaped by ice and water. Highway 1A is also known as the Bow Valley Parkway. Plan to stop at roadside viewpoints and the interpretive exhibits along this scenic route between Banff and Lake Louise. The Castle Mountain and other gorgeous peaks on the Bow Valley Parkway Drive are all inspiring in all seasons. Lake Louise is known as Diamond in the Wilderness. It was named in 1884 in honor of Princess Louise Caroline Alberta, daughter of Queen Victoria. Lake Louise is about 1,600 meters above sea level, and every visitor cannot help wondering why the lake has such a beautiful color. Just 15 kilometers from Lake Louise Village lies the world-famous Moraine Lake, which is a photographer's dream. At Canmore, visit one of many museums to step back in time to the 1880s or even earlier. Before leaving the town, go to the riverside to take a picture of Canmore on the Bow. The wetlands in the valley bottoms are rich in terrestrial and aquatic life as well as birds. The Rockies Parkland offers scenic drives, roadside viewpoints, interpretive exhibits, and easily accessible strolls for people of all ages, abilities, and interests. Whether you hike, 
cross-country ski or snowshoe, hundreds of kilometers of trails from easy to challenging are there for your exploration and enjoyment. Opportunities abound for hardy adventurers. Whitewater rafting on Kananaski River sounds exciting for paddlers. In winter, what could be more Canadian than skating on a frozen Rocky Mountain lake? The Canadian Rocky Mountains are truly a national treasure house. The Rockies remind me of a famous quote by the renowned American naturalist Henry David Thoreau, in wildness is the preservation of the world. Using the words of a park brochure, the Rockies are a perfect place to tune in to nature, to appreciate it, respect it, and pledge to protect it. The Canadian prairies are like a vast tableland, tilted to be higher on its Rocky Mountain side. Calgary, being Canada's highest city, is at 1,045 meters above sea level, while Winnipeg's altitude is only 239 meters. That's why river flow is generally eastward, and the three prairie provinces share water from the Rocky Mountain watersheds. The Rocky Mountains have glaciers in the Columbia ice fields. The runoff from Alberta's stream water contributes to oceans on three sides of the continent. Milk River in the south goes on to join the Missouri and Mississippi, and finally the Gulf of Mexico. Both the Peace and the Athabasca, big rivers cutting through the north, send their water to swell the mighty Mackenzie, which in turn delivers to the Arctic Ocean. In particular, the North Saskatchewan River arises from the Columbia ice field and serves as an extensive river corridor that provides a major east-west link across the prairie provinces. Beginning at the confluence of the Bow and Old Man Rivers in southern Alberta, the South Saskatchewan River flows across the southern prairie region to end at the Saskatchewan River Forks in central Saskatchewan. Water from the North and South Saskatchewan rivers flows into Lake Winnipeg and then goes on to Hudson Bay. Alberta is rich in land resources and mineral deposits. The province's economy is based on hydrocarbons, petrochemical industries, livestock, and agriculture. Traditionally, Alberta had a strong agriculture industry. However, the oil and gas industry has been a pillar of Alberta's economy since 1947, when substantial oil reserves were discovered at Leduc No. 1 well. Alberta's oil sands are among the world's largest deposits of crude oil. Since 1967, when exploitation of oil sands began, oil has become Alberta's black gold. Since then, oil and gas have reshaped the provincial economy, turning Alberta into an energy powerhouse. With big energy reserves come big responsibilities. The provincial regulator has put in place a series of rules and requirements in regard to developing and operating in oil sands. Through rigorous planning and implementation of ecologically responsible initiatives, Alberta is shifting to a more effective and efficient management system that considers the cumulative effects of all activities and improves integration across the economic, environmental, and social pillars. Innovation and sustainability are at the heart of energy production in Alberta. Wood Buffalo National Park is the largest national park in Canada at 44,807 square kilometers, straddling the border between Alberta 
and the Northwest Territories, Wood Buffalo National Park is larger than Denmark. It is located in northeastern Alberta and the southern Northwest Territories. This area was designated in 1983 as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for the biological diversity of the Peace Athabasca Delta and for the population of wild bison. A friendly rivalry between Edmonton and Calgary has persisted since the early years of the province. As the provincial capital, Edmonton is Alberta's political center, whereas Calgary is Canada's oil capital. Although the great horned owl is Alberta's official bird, the most common bird in Edmonton is magpie, and that's why it is known as the city of magpie. According to Oriental culture, magpie is a lucky bird. However, many Edmontonians hate it. Some even consider it a thief because the bird is so clever that it is good at grabbing food everywhere. The Western Edmonton Mall is the second largest shopping mall by square footage in North America, behind the Mall of America located close to downtown Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. The Mall of America encompasses 5.6 million square feet and the West Edmonton Mall has 5.3 million square feet. Inside West Edmonton Mall, you can shop, eat, skate, and do virtually everything. While in Edmonton, one should find time to visit the University of Alberta and take a few pictures of the impressive sweet grass bear and other statues. In comparison, Calgary is a dynamic modern city. Downtown Calgary offers a number of interesting places. For example, Created in 2000, the famous Five Monument is a tribute to the five prominent women who played a historic role in winning the legal battle for women to be legally recognized as persons by the Supreme Court of Canada in the late 1920s. Hosting the 1988 Winter Olympic Games gave Calgary a brilliant opportunity to showcase to the world that Canada is a superpower in winter sports. Calgary is full of natural beauty. For one thing, Bow River is such a charming waterway. The Princess Island Park is worth visiting. Hockey is a huge sport in Alberta. The rivalry between Edmonton and Calgary is best demonstrated by the two hockey teams notably the Edmonton-based Oilers versus the Calgary-based Flames. Oilers won the Stanley Cup five times in the 1980s, whereas the Flames has won three conference titles and one Stanley Cup championship. Alberta offers a tale of much more than two cities. A number of cities have interesting stories and red deer is one of them. Early fur traders encountered elk that looked like a bigger version of the red deer they had back in Europe. As a result, they mistakenly named the animal red deer. In 2004, DNA tests turned out that red deer and elk are in fact two distinct species. Albertans are entrepreneurial by nature. Lethbridge, which was established as a coal mining community in the 1800s in the Old Man River Valley, was named in 1885 in honor of William Lethbridge, a locally prominent investor and business leader. Lethbridge is well known for its warm summer thanks to bright sunshine for days and weeks in a row. Certainly, at the height of each summer, tens of thousands of visitors converge on Calgary to participate in the famous annual event Stampede, 
and get a flavor of the Wild West cowboy culture. While traveling in Alberta, don't just focus on the big cities. Actually, small towns have the uh, appeal as well. For example, Bashore, a town with less than 1,000 residents, has a proud slogan, a small town where big things happen. Stop by the town of Three Hills. In the afternoon of June 2nd, 2017, a brave man was pictured mowing his lawn calmly with a powerful twister not far away from his backyard. After this severe tornado, the man became a local hero, and the town of Three Hills has come to be known as home of Lawn Mower Man. Alberta is a friendly province, and Albertans are warm-hearted people. Have you heard about the story of a cup of coffee karma? Several years ago, at a downtown Edmonton, Tim Hortons, a young man in his mid to late 20s walked in and ordered a large double-double. When paying for his order, he asked the cashier to ring in 500 large coffees, giving a free coffee to each of the next 500 customers. This random act of kindness became headline news, and very soon, at many Tim Hortons drive through one person bought a coffee for the next customer in line behind him. And this goodwill gesture became viral, as hundreds of people emulated the practice. Albertans are masters of creating collaborative relations as well. Good examples include the Canadian Rocky Mountain World Heritage Site, which Alberta shares with British Columbia, and the Wood Buffalo National Park that straddles the border between Alberta and Northwest Territories. A third example is the Waterton Lakes National Park, where mountains meet the prairies. The Waterton Glacier International Peace Park is the union of Waterton Lakes National Park in Canada and Glacier National Park in the United States. Straddling the Canada-US border, both parks are declared biosphere reserves by UNESCO and their union as a World Heritage Site. Alberta's landscapes are of great geological and archaeological interest. The Royal Tyrrell Museum offers a superb educational experience for visitors to learn about the age of dinosaurs. People who visit the river valleys in southern Alberta for the first time may be curious about the term badlands. Standing in stark contrast to the gently rolling plains, the badlands were named by early European explorers who termed the flat-topped hills and deep gullies as bad lands to cross. As dramatic landforms characterized by barren slopes, deep gullies with occasional hoodoo rocks, bad lands provide striking evidence of the forces of nature, particularly the power of erosion by wind and water over time. The so-called badlands are not bad at all. For those who crave for unusual landscapes, Alberta's badlands are a photographer's dream. Besides, badlands are a great place for hiking and other outdoor activities. Alberta is frequently mentioned in weather forecasts. Southern Alberta is one of the windiest regions in Canada second only to St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, Lethbridge gets more days with strong winds than any city in Canada. While Calgary, famous for its Chinook blows, is the windiest large city in Canada. While the prevailing winds in Alberta are northwesterly and during winter they can be chilly indeed, the Rocky Mountains have a moderating effect and with the assistance of Pacific Ocean air current, Alberta's winters are less severe 
than those in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. For those living near the Rocky Mountains foothills, from time to time, cold winter is interrupted by warm southwesterly winds known as Chinooks. Having their origin in the Pacific's warm Japanese current, these winds are capable of raising temperatures suddenly. For Calgarians, after going to bed at night with the temperature well below zero, they may wake up the following morning to find the snow melting. Canadians living on the prairies and further east are surely familiar with the Alberta Clipper, a fast-moving, low-pressure system that originates in the east of the Rocky Mountains. Constituting a major winter season storm, Alberta Clippers typically track east-southeastward across southern Canada and the northern United States in a couple of days. Associated with cold air masses, Alberta Clippers are capable of affecting weather all the way to the Great Lakes and beyond, producing rapid snow events in a matter of hours, and localized blizzard conditions are not unheard of, especially when interacting with moisture from the Great Lakes. To borrow a few words from John Denver's famous song, Rocky Mountain High, let me end this episode with a little poem of my own. Canadian Rocky Mountain High, majestic peaks rising up to the sky, elk and sheep graze alpine meadow, wild rose bloom in camwa on the row. Blame me not for twisters or clippers, applaud me for fostering streams and rivers. Alberta, a land where soaring eagles fly, Canadian Rocky Mountain High. Thank you for watching and listening. Please subscribe to this channel, Words of Woods.